so glad to have you today. It's wonderful that we can come into your home or wherever this might be or whatever technical device you're watching it on. It's a pleasure to connect with you. The name of the program is Homekeepers, and we are very interested in your home and do everything in our power to bring you the kind of information that can be beneficial to your home. So come right on in if it's your first time. Don't let it be your last, all right? And uh, to those wonderful regular folks out there, just one more time, I want to extend a lot of love to you. Um, I have been blessed to meet and have on this program what I call my regulars, and they are folks with specific uh, subject matters, and uh, they come on once a month. And I have such a guest on today, and it's Heidi Janssen. She's a real expert on Common Core and what's happening in our educational system in the United States of America, and it's very serious. And you know why I like Heidi? Because, well, she's very smart, for one thing, but she is a mom, and she has done this research on her own. It is not a government administrator of some type or, or somebody with a political agenda, but it's a lovely young lady with two children that she's concerned about. And she goes to the school board meetings and she speaks there. And she's not always the favorite person there, but she is faithful. And I like to bring her expertise to you because friend, grandmother, grandfather, parents, you need to know what's going on. If your children, grandchildren are attending public school in America, it's not like it was when you were growing up. So welcome back, uh, Heidi. It's a pleasure to have her today. And I'm going to join Stephanie and we're going to fix a crock pot potato soup. I've already tasted it, friends. Pay close attention to it. And I think in all the years that we've been doing this program, only a couple of crock pot recipes, but I'm telling you, they can be so valuable and so convenient. Um, whoever thought of the crock pot and invented it, God bless you, my friend. All right, I want to, before I join Stephanie, again remind you from the bottom of my heart that um, we need your help. We are viewer supported. And that means, guess what? That means the viewers support us. And so I would like to urge you, I, I totally believe in the ability of the Holy Spirit to nudge people, to speak to them, because it's happened to me many, many times. And I have given because I sensed that the Lord was directing me to do that. And you know what? I don't regret a dime of it. I was telling a grandson recently that over the long haul, those people who give to the Lord, uh, they're going to they're gonna do a whole lot better than those who do not. So we want to put the address up on the screen, but if, like most people nowadays, you do a lot of things online or just with your debit card, credit card, you can use 1-800-229-0059. It's there on your screen. And then if you don't, uh, you can write to me at Homekeepers. Last I checked, the mail was still coming through. Is that right, Stephanie? Box yes. 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758. I always like to go home and get my mail. I love getting my mail. A lot of times I have checks in the mail from rebates and stuff, so I, I love rebates? getting my mail. Yeah. Yeah, my sister, I, I sent my sister something in the mail. It was like a week and a half later. I said, did you get something in the mail? She goes, oh, I haven't checked my mail in a week. I'm like, oh my. what? It's the first thing yeah. I do when I get home. I love yeah, my mail. Yeah. Well, um, what's happening in your life? <laughs> this I've, is my creative friend. <laughs> oh, yes. Well, I was going to show you a picture, but now I'm not. So. I'm not. Because we don't have a picture. picture. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll find that picture because yes. um, she does these creative things, and I understand you were for a, uh, a grandchild. Mm -hmm. You fixed. I made a, a made birthday your own basket. basket. Yep. We'll talk about it we'll some other Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. All this right. recipe, mm -hmm. seriously, super easy, mm -hmm. and it's so delicious. You're not going to believe how easy now, it is. Now, you're a working girl. How often do you do like a, a crock, girl. crock pot meal? Um, probably once a week. Do you? Oh, sure. I love my crock pot. Oh, you put a, a roast in a there roast and, in and there or vegetables? Mm -hmm. Or I'll put chicken in the crock pot, you know, mm -hmm. and then shred it. 
I'll put a lot mm -hmm. of chicken in the crock mm -hmm. pot, shred it, and then that'll be my shredded chicken that I bag up and freeze. Um, That's a good idea. You know, I don't like to turn the oven on during the summer, so I'll put potatoes mm -hmm. in the crock pot and make baked potatoes. And also, it's there when you get home. Mm -hmm. You don't it have to go. It doesn't heat the house pull up. Pull the ingredients yes, out. Yes. Yes. All right. Okay. So you're gonna stand and look pretty. All right. Do it. Okay. I have a bag of hash browns. Super. This is like on, honestly. This is wonderful. I don't wonderful. know who thought of this, but thank you, because I hate peeling potatoes. Hash browns. And we have um, chicken broth. We have low sodium chicken broth. Yeah, you were talking about that on another show. That, yeah. That one of your fans. Yes. Record, uh, one of her Facebook low sodium. fans. So, yep. So this is Steph low sodium. Stephanie on Facebook because. Yeah, we Stephanie's fan club. Her um, friends to increase. Yes. And then I have a cream of chicken condensed soup. Seriously, this is so. This is just one of those ones I love. Shall you, I go ahead and do this too to show what they do at the end? Sure, uh, okay. sure. So, okay, okay. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, go <laughs> so ahead. So I have this stuff and then I'm gonna put a few bacon bits. Yeah. Okay, and then I'm gonna put this on for four hours, mm -hmm. okay? And then in four hours, we're gonna take cream cheese. Yeah. And we're just gonna um, doll, you have it kind of cut up. We're just yeah, gonna doll it up, up in there. And this is so the cream cheese comes after you've cooked it for like four hours yeah and okay. then you leave it in there while it melts let's do a little salt and pepper in here too well we were talking about low sodium what do you just a little for for taste <laughs> everything else is low sodium so a little salt and pepper mm. and then you've and then you've done the cream cheese and that's it okay now do you, I mean, do you just put this easy. do you put the cheese on the top yeah just okay. once you put it in the bowl put the cheese on the i'm going to taste this again just for the yeah, cameras but I, like, I already know it's good it's Th so this, super this simple this tastes like um i don't know it tastes like some kind of a soup or something in a very high-end restaurant you know I hate peeling potatoes and stuff. I, it just, to me, it's one of those annoying kitchen jobs. So this, with the frozen hash, mm -hmm. oh, mm. you gotta get all, wait, wait, wait. You gotta spoon, yeah, you gotta get spoon. Get all the goodies there. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's really, really delicious. When I tasted it initially, the cream cheese wasn't in it, and mm. I was like, oh, it's all right. Once the cream cheese got it's in there, absolutely forget delicious. it. Because mm -hmm. if it were bad, we'll tell you. It's so, so good. Mm -hmm. Yep. It's very, very, you want it. Yeah. Super easy. Do you like having Heidi here to inform us and educate us? Almost definitely. Telling you this is valuable stuff. So if you haven't met her, you're going to meet her in just about 30 seconds. But if you want this recipe, I believe you do. It won't cost mm -hmm. you a dime. Nope, free. Just email me. That information is coming up on your screen. And if you don't have a computer, write to me. We'll send it to you. And what is it called again? It's Easy it's Crock Pot Potato mm -hmm. Soup. Mm-hmm. Delicious. Stay with us. If you would like a copy of today's recipe, just write to the address on your screen, or you can email your request to artheline at rippy.org. If you haven't met her, I'm delighted to introduce to you uh, Heidi Janssen, and she is a businesswoman, and she is an opera singer, and um, got interested in something called Common Core. Now, perhaps you have not heard of it, but the more I've learned about it, I felt it was absolutely important enough that we have her on at least once a month to inform you. I am not impressed with ignorance at all. And I want to do the very best I can to bring information to you that will help you and help you along in life and help, help you to really know what's going on. So welcome back. Thank so you. So glad to have you. Thank you. I'm uh, excited to be here. Yeah, I understand that you uh, spoke for your school board meeting. Oh, my goodness. Yes, yesterday well, not morning. for them. W w at them? At, at, <laughs> at them. I sped yeah. red. I wrote up a uh, what I wanted to share with them, and I got through the first page, but that's okay. I did present them with the rest of it so they could read it at their leisure. But, yeah, it was interesting. Very enlightening. Yeah. Uh, what basically were you 
Well, so I have it here. Oh, you have it there. Okay. I do. So um, I came across a really interesting find. It was a year ago, and Senator John Legg, who is the chairman of the Education Committee for the Senate in Florida, he presented to the Pasco School Board a year ago, and this is what he said. I just took expert excerpts. I uh, have it on YouTube, so if anybody would like to have it, they can certainly view it. He said the original bill, they were talking about um, House Bill 7009, addressed a real concern of mine dealing with online assessments. Now we're talking about the assessments, uh, the end of year assessments that are tied to the Common Core. In Florida, it's called the Florida Standards Assessment, and it is yet to be completed. <clears throat> so he said, and um, are we ready? He said, he said, you know, a real concern of his was dealing with online assessments and are we ready? As we begin looking around the state on these assessments, what we saw was that we were not ready. The state of Florida is not ready for the online assessments. If you do load testing, I don't think there is a single district that met all the categories. If we were to throw this switch next year, that would be this school year, which they're fully planning to throw the switch, to do online assessments next year, I think the whole system would have imploded upon itself. Now, I, wa I want to let the <coughs> audience know a similarity. There was a health care plan implemented last year. It's called um, the Affordable Care Act. And at that time, the Speaker of the House, her name was Nancy Pelosi, said this. We've got to vote on this so then we can see what's in it. Now that gives a whole new meaning to stupid. And I don't know why there wasn't a real outcry that we've sent people, we have sent representatives to Washington, D.C. to put laws through that they don't even read. This is the same thing, isn't it? Yep. That um, f from whoever, wherever these uh, tests are coming from, implement them and the tests aren't even even designed yet no nope. I have actually I asked our principal at our school um, to please I asked her seven questions and the, my first question was has the American Institutes of Research completed writing the Florida standards assessment that's well, a fair question yes and her answer um, was not to send me to the district to get my answer. She said, this question should be directed to the Florida Department of Education Office of Assessment. And she gave me the phone number. So not, let me check and find out for you. It mm -hmm. was, let me send you directly to the top. Mm -hmm. Let's just send you on up the line. Forget the intermediate steps. Let's just send you straight to the state. Mm -hmm. So I went to the state. That's why we have you here. <laughs> and they did respond, and I was pleased. I do have some contacts in the Department of Education. Now, let me just get this straight. I want to say this with all my heart, hear my heart. It is not the teachers. Mm -hmm. It is not the people that are employed by the government, um, by our state offices. Mm -hmm. They are doing a job that they've been instructed to do. Mm -hmm. And our teachers, I'm afraid, are at the bottom of the totem pole. So when you're talking about, we're going to talk about um, opting out or refusing the mm -hmm. test today, um, you're not, it's not rejecting the teachers. They right. had no control over right. this and they have no control over this. So um, when they wrote to me, they said, thank you for contacting the Office of Assessment and the Florida Department of Education regarding the Florida Standards Assessment. Uh, the test construction process for spring 2015 is being finalized now. Oh. Could I have a copy, please? <laughs> yes. But the development phase for future assessments is ongoing. Generally, items that appear on our assessments have been reviewed over the course of several years. Mind you, they said generally this is the, the practice. Um, and they are also subject to several rounds of educator review. This process includes reviews for bias and community sensitivity before inclusion as field test items, which provides performance data. So I'm gonna skip down here uh, where they say everything that they should be. And then they said, the contract for the FSA was only secured in May of this, this year, which means the department did not have the lead time I mentioned before. Man, they're slick. <laughs> so they said, this is everything that should so they be can done. they say all that that says nothing. Yep, they should say all this should have been done, but, but since we didn't have the lead time, we didn't have time to do all of that. Yeah, so, so the bottom line is we're going to give your kids tests that we haven't even put together yet. But they did say they were field testing the Utah questions. 
that, that we rented for $5.4 million with your tax dollars? You know, I just don't have anything to say. But how can we be so dumb? So dumb. Um, our main purpose today is to talk about, and you've seen it in your newspaper, because this is today's newspaper uh, for St. Petersburg. That's where I live. And uh, Heidi's going to talk about opting out of these tests, which totally frustrate ch uh, children and parents. I, I don't know if I have it with me. Um, well, anyway, I had an article where this woman said, I, she said, I have a second grader and brings home a test that she cannot understand because they're not allowed to get the answer the way you and I did, mm -hmm. like two and two is four. Uh, that, that doesn't suffice. It depends on how they got it, and on one of the last programs, you went into that somewhat. So um, Lee County had voted, that's part of Florida, to opt out. They had one, one vote that carried it, opt out of the test, and that person reneged. Mm -hmm. And that's in, in the paper today, because my original notes had, oh, right. one county did. Yeah. And uh, she, she backtracked. How you'd love to see some people with some core values, some guts, and will stick to well, what they I'm, believe. I'm telling you, Lee County could have blazed the trail for the entire nation. They were the first county to opt out of state-mandated assessments. It's very interesting. I watched that board meeting, and she was afraid, this lady, uh, Mary Fisher. Then she shouldn't be in office. Yep, and she said, okay, so she vote, voted. It was three against two, so they passed to opt out. And the people that were there were elated. Um, I'm not surprised that she she called a special meeting for Tuesday morning at 8:30 in the morning, where not hardly any working person could attend, so that she could rescind her vote because I believe that she probably was threatened. Okay, what excuse did she give? Uh, she just thought that it, she was it wasn't a wise decision because they didn't have a plan in place because somebody got to her yeah and you know what we have a lot of smart people in Florida mm -hmm. and we have a lot of smart people in our districts sure. our teachers could write standards mm -hmm. we could write assessments and their superintendent said that she felt that they didn't have what it was what was necessary to write an end of the year assessment to replace what the state was giving us and we just heard that they haven't even finished it yet uh, I want to backtrack a little bit because maybe this is the first time a lot of viewers have seen you, but you got interested in this because, like this uh, parent that I just kind of told you about a while ago, your son came home with a question, uh, a, te a problem that she couldn't do the way they wanted, and um, he was frustrated, you were frustrated, mm -hmm. and, that, and that's what opened the door. And this is a very educated gal here, and you had 4.0 or something all the way through school. <laughs> and, all, and she she couldn't do it. Your son was 10 years old at the time, and she couldn't do the problem. This is what's happening to the educational system in America. That's what we want to it is. inform you about. It's called Common Core. And uh, so when you, you took this to the teacher, correct? Mm -hmm. I did. And, and what was her response? The response was the pat answer that we are now in the Common Core state standards, which we're implementing now, and just blah, blah, blah about global being, you know, helping our kids become more critical thinkers. Uh, there's more rig rigorous rigor that's in one their, of their standards. That's one of their the words. Buzzwords, yeah, that's a buzzword. um, and making them competitive in a global society. And I was like, oh boy. Yeah. You... I am international. My mother's German. I grew up speaking German. My husband is a German citizen. He grew up in Berlin. I'm like, I know international. Mm -hmm. I said, so let me ask you this. And I was sincere. I said, are you going to introduce French uh, into our curriculum next year or Chinese? Uh, uh, yeah, if you're going to be global. The, I think the frightening thing, too, is that the schools will now become regional. They're not going to be local. They're not going to have that wonderful flavor and, and texture. You know, it is so funny that you say that because uh, there is something called the FSA, the Florida Standards, uh, it's a portal.org, uh, Florida Standards, it might even say portal.org. If, if people contact me, I can give them the link. Mm -hmm. But there you can take uh, 
practice tests for this new new test. I took one for my daughter's grade, which is third grade, and the very first question that I read, and then you're supposed to read and then answer questions, was all about how great taking online tests were, and that you don't even have to be in the same classroom. You could be in a classroom with somebody in South Africa or China. You don't even have to be with a whole group of people. You could just be at home in being instructed by a teacher who might be in Sweden. And I thought, what are you feeding my children? Yeah. What are you feeding my children? And also, there's a real ideology attached to this. Mm -hmm. The fr From the information I've read, the history of the United States is just... Rewritten. It's totally rewritten. It's very minuscule. That there's far more being taught about the environment and uh, the green movement as yeah. such. So it's a political. Uh, let me see if I can find this. Um, this is where they, f she flipped, and I don't have my glasses on, but uh, let's see what I can do. I don't have mine either, so don't ask me. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I can read it. <laughs> um, okay, this basically says that these tests, which are almost designed that they can't pass them the first time, correct? Yeah, and you know what? They cost all of $30 a student. So how great for that company that's administering them that they have a guaranteed income by failing 30%. Yes, because and then they have to pay to take it again the second time. Heidi, is this something that where you just follow the money trail? Yeah, oh, I would say so. I would say that we have some people in this state that are very... Um, very much tied to this. There's, they are so heavily entrenched in it that it's on up the line into our government. To say nothing of the book publishers. Correct. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah. But then even there, you can see where McKinsey and Company and Pearson and even the Broad uh, Corporation and Wal Walton, the uh, Walmart. I mean, you can see Jeb Bush is heavily involved with his Foundation for Excellence. Oh my goodness, he's writing education policy for the state of Florida, whether people know it or not. Is that right? Um, the uh, the teachers are going to be judged by how oh yeah they the test. accountability part of it yeah. is huge. The stakes are only getting higher. Starting this year, a portion of teacher pay will be tied to the student test scores. That's correct. Yeah. So t teach, uh, the students will be penalized, first of all, so they can be held back in these key grades, like third grade and eighth grade. They can be held back or tenth grade if they don't pass a certain portion of this Florida standards assessment that is yet to be finished. Okay, I, I read that also. Why the third grade and the eighth grade? They is, is it designed, is mm -hmm. it absolutely designed that a percentage of them will fail? Yeah, yeah, it asked them, I've asked them. Uh, in my presentation yesterday, I said, what is the percentage of students that fail every year based because of these tests that are held back? In Did a grade? you get an answer? Not yet. I don't anticipate it. I will keep hammering away. Because um, in first place, they teach so much stuff that they don't need. I, I know I sound like a cranky old person, but you need math, <laughs> you need science, you need history, you need English, you need literature, all those things. But they bring in so many other things mm -hmm. and, and design a problem that the parent can't solve. Did you ever figure out what, what the, Eventually. the right what thing was for the problem that your 10-year-old brought home? Yeah, the strategy that they wanted. They wanted him to do it in a very, very long form, which the strategy was. Was this math? It was math. And you know what? I talked to a, a mom yesterday who actually met me at the school board, um, and she says her third grader does not want to go to school, does not. Mm -hmm. And she said, "Here's the thing: last year in second grade, he was doing work. He was doing problems in his head, like two plus two, three plus three, four plus five, eight plus ten. Those kind of things he was doing in his head. So they were sitting at the dinner table recently, and she said." You know, what is, what's two plus one? And he literally, she thought he was joking, but he put up his fingers and went, because they are teaching to count on your fingers and toes. They really We are. were taught not to. Yes. So for them, you confuse the child by giving them so many strategies that they're second guessing themselves. They expect them to reason through things. They'll reason their way right out of it because they're confused. They're like, well, I can reason it this way, but this, there's another strategy. Well, here's another strategy. And oh my goodness, well, maybe I'm really not right. Strategy is one of their buzzwords mm -hmm. also. I, um, I keep 
I keep wondering, what is behind all of this? It's, it has to be political. It's control. It, has it is to absolute be. control. I've been saying it over and over again, and you know, people laugh at me when I even bring this up, but I, I, I've said, what is the possibility of us approaching the National Governors Association and the Council of Chief State Schools Officers who hold the copyright on these Common Core State books. Standards to remove the copyright, make them public domain yeah. so that the states can manipulate them and change them but the blueprint will be there, but like for the younger grades, they can change them to make them age appropriate, not to expect what's beyond their brain development. That's the problem. And how was that received? Well, I haven't gotten an answer yet, but I will pursue that one, yeah. because I think that if they lifted that, there would be an answer in it. And I, I would like to hear from you and uh, maybe things that you are learning, but also in any uh, questions that you may have. I tell you, the, the greatest danger in this is that from kindergarten, forever, infinity, they can track the child. And that is really total government control. That's something you absolutely do not want. Freedom is gone at that point. Yeah, it is. Um, the, uh, the regional is going to replace your local governments. And uh, the federal government is going to control all teaching standards, and that's the last thing you want. Yeah, I was so enlightened by my having gone to the school board meeting yesterday. Of course, I was a little nervous and everything, and, and mm -hmm. they have like a, a horseshoe, and the podium is right there in front of them. I'm used to being on a stage where people are far away. I was like, oh, you're really close. Yeah. Um, but I felt that their hands, like they have said to me, my hands are tied, I can't do anything. And I don't know how much they can even talk outside of the board meeting. Oh, come on. I don't think they can. Yeah. So there, it's amazing that anything gets done. But I felt that our superintendent, who didn't greet me at all, even though I've had interaction with him, which mm -hmm. I thought was very poor, mm -hmm. I thought he should at least have been yeah. hospitable, uh, that he had more to say than they did. And when you watch the Lee County School Board meeting, see. you could see how powerful their superintendent was, who works for yeah. the school board. How did that happen? We'll have the answer to that next time. <laughs> I know. <laughs> we are out of time, but she'll be back uh, just in three or four weeks. And uh, let us know what you think about this. And please join me next time, remembering there's no higher calling than that of a homekeeper. It's truer now than it's ever been. <laughs> well, that's it. If you should miss a homekeeper's program, you can catch up by going to www.ctnonline.com. Click on CTN Programs and then on Homekeepers.